Well, hello, Fellowship Kids, and welcome to Kids Church Online. As you can see, this is, in fact, my kitchen. And, well, this is the eating part of it. And this is where I've set everything up today so that we can learn about Jesus and the poor widow. That's what we're going to be discussing. But before we get to that, last time we met, for those of you that met, we talked about a challenge. And the challenge last week you had was to stand up for something's right. Well, something that is right. So I'm hoping that you guys got the opportunity to do that. And what I want you to remember about that is sometimes when we do the things that Jesus wants us to do and we stand up for that, sometimes it's not always easy. But we always have his help. All right, we're going to move on to what we're going to talk about this week, which is the poor widow. And we're still shaking it up. Remember, we're going to shake ourselves. We're going to shake some boxes. And we're going to shake up the world by doing the things that God wants us to do, right? And when we do that, people around us notice. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to get all warmed up. Are you guys ready? Okay. First, I want you to shake your left hand, shake your right hand, shake your head, shake yourself. Okay. If you weren't doing that, you get another opportunity now with our Shake It Up music. Are you ready? Let's go. All right, very good. Now, our bodies are warmed up. Hopefully, our brains are warmed up. And let's start diving into what we're going to talk about today. So, in today's story which is from the Bible, Jesus introduced his followers to a new kind of math. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Here we have a picture. We have a picture of three jelly beans, and we have a picture of 12 jelly beans. Okay, which is more, the three jelly beans or the 12 jelly beans? You're probably thinking the 12 jelly beans. Okay, hold on to that thought. Let's try this one. Here we have one cookie, or we have seven cookies. Which is more? You're probably thinking the seven cookies, okay? I have one more. These are potato chips. I love potato chips, by the way. Well, I like jelly beans and cookies too. All right, but which is more, two potato chips or 25 potato chips? So you're probably thinking the 25 potato chips, right? That's what I picked. Okay, it might sound crazy though, but you got everyone, if you picked what I picked, you got every one of those questions wrong. Are you confused yet? Don't worry. It all makes sense at the end of our story. Jesus is going to do some crazy math, and he's going to show us that what we think is more isn't always more. All right, so one day, Jesus was sitting in the temple courtyard. Now, the temple was like God's house. It was a special place where God's people could go to pray to him, listen to his word that was being read, and give him offerings, okay? So let's see if our first mystery box can help us figure out what Jesus was doing at the temple. All right, so here's our first box, and I'm gonna shake it to see. Okay, and try, you can try and guess what it is. I guess I shouldn't guess because I know what it is, but let me give you a hint. I have a face and two hands, but no body. Hmm, I wonder what it is. Let's take a look. It's a watch. Okay, see, get it? I have a face and then the two hands. Well, this one is a digital one, but you get the idea. All right, so it is a watch. Do you think that Jesus was telling time on his watch? Probably not, because back then there really wasn't any such thing as a watch, and definitely not a digital one. While Jesus was sitting at the temple courtyard, he watched as the crowd of people came in and out. All kinds of different people came to worship God at his temple. Tall people, short people, rich people, poor people, but no matter who they were, most of them were doing the same thing. Let's see if the second mystery box can help us figure out what they were doing. 
Here is the second one. Okay, I'm gonna shake it. You ready? Hmm, it almost kind of sounds like the first one, but let's see what the hint says. You're holding me right now. Hmm. Okay, well, let's see what's in there. It says you're holding me right now. All right, let's check and see what's in there. Ah, it's another box. And it says offering on it. How about that? It's a box in a box. All right, the Temple Courtyard had offering boxes all around it. The offering box is where people would give their money to God. You know, a lot like we do today. We have the, pat, the offering plate and stuff. But later on, the temple priest would collect money from the boxes and use it to do God's work, like taking care of people in need, which is what we use some of our offerings for at church. We're going to talk about that a little bit later. So we have an offering box. We have a watch and we have an offering box. All right. Let's see what is going on. Um, as a crowd of people drop their money into the offering boxes, Jesus noticed something. Let's see if box number three can help us tell what Jesus noticed. Okay, I'm going to shake it. Ready? Hmm. I wonder what's in there. Do you guys have any guesses? Well, let's see what the clue says. Round and round I go, on your finger I will show. So that one's kind of a clue and a riddle. All right, let's see. What's in here? Ah, round and round I go, on your finger I will show. It's rings. Look at that, all kinds of fun rings and fun colors that you could put on. What does this have to do with anything that we've been talking about? Well, a lot of rich people dressed in very nice clothes, right? And they wore very fancy jewelry. And they walked up to the offering boxes and they threw large amounts of money into the offering box. Sort of like this. Here's my big bag of money and me wearing my big fancy jewels. And I'm just gonna drop a whole bunch of money into that offering box. But, for as much money as they gave, they still had a lot of money left over. Look at this. Look at how much I gave. And look at how much I still have left over. Then Jesus noticed something else. Let's see if we can figure it out with mystery box number four. Ugh, this is our biggest box here. You guys ready to hear it shake? It almost sounds kind of empty, doesn't it? All right, let's check it out and see what's in there. Oh, wait, hold on, I forgot something. Let's read the clue. I make very little sense. Hmm, I'll give you a hint. Sense is spelled C-E-N-T-S, sense. Let's see what's in here. I make very little sense. Well, I was right. There's two pennies in here, two copper coins in here. Oh, from the middle of all of the rich people, a poor widow emerged. Now, a widow was somebody who had lost her husband, right? And in Jesus' time, if you were a widow, it was really, really hard to earn enough money to kind of take care of yourself, to buy your food, to have, get your housing, you know, pay for your housing. That kind of thing. But as the poor widow approached the offering box, she took out two very small copper coins worth only a few cents, and she placed them in the box. When Jesus saw what she did, he called his disciples to him, and he said, and I'm going to read from Mark, 12, chapter 12, verses 43 through 44. Summoning his disciples, he said to them, Truly, I tell you, the poor widow has put more into the treasury than all the others. For they all gave out of their surplus, 
But she, out of her poverty, has put everything she had, all she had to live on. You know, what Jesus was telling them there is that the people, the rich people that gave all these tons of coins and stuff, they were giving it out of the surplus, the extra money they had. But when the poor widow came and she dropped in the two coins that weren't worth a whole lot, it was worth a whole lot because it was everything that she had and she wanted to give it to God. Okay. Remember earlier, I asked you which was more. And we talked about the jelly beans and we talked about the cookies and we talked about the potato chips. Okay. And we all, well, I agreed for us because it makes sense, which is more three jelly beans or 12 jelly beans, right? And we all picked the 12 jelly beans, and we all picked the seven cookies, and we all picked the 25 potato chips. But let's see what Jesus has to say about all this. All right. I have a bag of jelly beans. They were not hard to find since we're getting close to Easter, right? So what if your friend gave, what if your friend, just any a friend that you have, had a giant bag of jelly beans like this, all right? And let's say they gave you 12 jelly beans from it. Now, that sure would be nice of them, right? Because it's 12 jelly beans. But is that a lot? Not really, because they still have a ton of jelly beans left over. So let's count those out. There's four, let's see, eight, and 12. Okay, there is 12 jelly beans from the bag. But look, there's still a whole bunch of jelly beans left in this bag, right? Now, imagine if your friend had just three jelly beans. Just three. And they gave them all to you. Would that be a lot? Of course it would. Because your friend just gave you everything that they had. And that's just like what happened in our story today, right? The rich people gave a lot of money, remember? But it was just a little bit of what they had, okay? But the poor widow, on the other hand, even though she gave just two coins, it was everything that she had. And that's why Jesus said that she had given more than everybody else. That was pretty generous of her, right? We give everything that we have to God. We're being generous just like the poor widow. And generous means to give big with a cheerful heart. Can you read that? I'm stretching as far as I can. There we go. Get to give big with a cheerful heart. Would it be hard to give and be as generous as the poor widow? Sometimes it can be really hard to give big to others. And if we give it all, sometimes we just give a little, right? Imagine for a second that this was your bag of jelly beans. Hmm. I can hardly pass it up. They're good. You guys should get yourself some jelly beans. But imagine for a second. If this was your bag of jelly beans. If someone asked you for some, would you say, sure, have as much as you want? Or would you say, you can have a tiny amount? A lot of times we just want to give a tiny bit. But not the poor widow. She gave big. And I think I know why. Now, imagine these jelly beans aren't jelly beans at all. Imagine that they're a very good thing that we have, okay? The poor widow, she understood that everything that we have, it comes from God. Our money, our house, our clothes, uh, our food, our toys, and even our jelly beans, right? God has shared all of these things with us. So when the poor widow had a chance to share her things, she did it, and she did it with a cheerful heart. And do you know what? That's exactly how God wants us to give. 
And that's what our Bible verse says for today. From 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. And it says, Each person should do as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or out of compulsion, since God loves a cheerful giver. What that verse is saying is that we should give, we should give generously, we should give happily. If a friend, if I'm sharing my jelly beans, for example, with a friend, and I give them a handful, but I like throw it at them or throw it on their bowl on the table, and I've got a scowl on my face, that's not, it is giving, but it's not giving cheerfully. And God wants us to give generously and cheerfully. All right. At our church, we give what's called tithes and offerings. Now, you guys, when you get uh, go to like family worship day or you go to church with your family, at the end, they pass around the offering plates and everybody puts in their tithes and offering. Have you ever wondered like what that's all about and what happens with those tithes and offering? That's when your family is giving back to God, right? They're just giving back, they're giving back some of their money to God. And God doesn't want us to give because we feel like we're supposed to. Remember what we just talked about? He wants us to give because we want to be generous and he wants us to do it very cheerfully. If we cross our arms and we scratch our face and we say, fine, here you go. Is that how God wants us to give? No, it's not. He wants us to give happy attitude and he wants us to give um, joyfully and generously. So here's your challenge for this week. I want you to look for opportunities to give big to others with a cheerful heart. Now, am I talking about money? Maybe, maybe not. Am I talking about jelly beans? Maybe, maybe not. But could you give generously of your time? Maybe you could take time, especially now that we, are, we can't all be together, to send cards maybe to some of our older people that are in the church and, and they're kind of at their homes and they can't get out, right? Or maybe just even other kids that you know. They're bored too, sitting at their houses. You know, they're looking for things. So maybe you can do a card. You can give some of your time. Or maybe make a video for a grandparent or a friend, an aunt or uncle, and send it to them. So there's a lot of different ways you can give generously and with a cheerful heart. Tithes and offering is one way, right? And remember, let's all try to be like the poor widow. And let's give all that we have to God because he has given us so much. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for all the things that you have given us, Lord. Each and every day, you have given so abundantly and generously to us, Lord. And help us to pass it on. Help us to give cheerfully and generously to others. It's in the name of Jesus that I pray. Amen.